Hello uh, again, my name is Mark. I'm gonna, from uh, LSC here up in Duluth at the Center for Advanced Aviation. I'm gonna do another quick companion video to some of the other videos I've been doing about how to lay out and bend, uh, and bend aluminum sheet metal for aircraft. Today what I'm gonna show is some of the basics of how to actually use and set up the brake. Uh, and I'll show you a couple different brakes here we have at LSC. First one, is this brake right here, uh, a finger brake we call it, or some people, uh, it's a box and pan brake, some people call it a finger brake. I'll show you in a second some of the advantages of a finger brake. Um, the way this brake works, it, it's, it's four feet, so we can bend, we can bend some pretty uh, long pieces of metal. This one is a good brake for, I would say, 40 thousandths aluminum or, or thinner. It's not a great break if you're going to try to bend 63 or definitely not uh, eighth of an inch aluminum. But for small aluminum, which most most of our projects uh, entail, this one works pretty good. I've already set up the brake. In a little bit, I'm going to show you how to set it up. But I've already set up the brake uh, to bend at a uh, at a sixteenth of an inch radius. So basically, what I want to do. Um, I got a sight line drawn on here. I'm just gonna line up, I'm gonna line up my brake, the nose of my brake right on my sight line there. And get it locked in. Um, I'll show you how to lock it in a second, but what you wanna do is just make sure that your piece is secure enough where it's not gonna go anywhere. So I got it locked in there, and I'm just gonna put a 90 degree bend on here. I'm gonna lift this up till I get a little bit past 90 because there's gonna be a certain amount of spring back little bit more that's about 90 right there the counterweight does all the work for you so you don't have to you don't have to apply a whole lot of pressure on the handle to get the brake to come up because the because the counterbalance does most of the work but here I've uh, bent a 90 I've bent a 90 in here with a uh, uh, with a 332nd excuse me I said 16th of an inch uh, earlier but this is a 332nd radius on this piece of aluminum right here so that's just kind of a real quick down and dirty of how to use this brake. Let's take a second and I'll show you one of the other brakes that we have uh, that we have in the shop here in LSC. This little guy right here is kind of a fun tool. It is actually a slip roll former, a brake and a shear kind of all in one tool. Now this little guy is definitely not meant for, for thick aluminum. I actually recommend not using aluminum any thicker than 25. If you have a small piece of 32, it'll, it'll cut it and bend it, but this one, this one's really meant for thin aluminum. Um, so like I said, it's got a slip roll former on there. Um, it's got a brake right here. So I already drew a line on there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna line my piece in there and I'm going to slowly bring it down and it looks like I'm lined up now I'm just gonna oops. and I'm just gonna crank it and I'm gonna try to put a 90 in there a 90 looks like it'd be right about there Maybe I didn't quite give it a 90. Eh, pretty close. But there it put a, it put a, I could kind of bend this to get it to be a 90, but it put a 90 in there. The other cool thing uh, that this tool will do, like I said, it's a shear too. So I got a line drawn on there. I want to shear this piece off. So I'm going to just stick it in here. Just like, just like a, um, a big 48 inch uh, foot shear like over there, same principle, just not nearly as, uh, as strong, but I put it in there and then it just sheared. It's got a little bar there to hold it. And there I just, there I just sheared, off, sheared off a piece right there. So kind of a cool little tool is a shear and a brake all in one. So let's go back to a regular brake here. 
again, like I said, right now, uh, right now I have this, I have this brake set up to do a 3.30 second radius. So let's say I got a part here, I've already taken the time, I drew my bend allowances on here and I do have a little mark where my sight line is. It's really hard to read because I'm dealing with a, with a pretty small bend allowance there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this so it's like a corner. One of the cool things about a finger break is I can line this up in here. Line it up on my sight line there. Lock it in place. Okay, it's locked. It's not going anywhere. And now I can bend that up. And again, I want to put a 90 in there. There's a certain amount of spring back. This is pretty thin aluminum I'm using here, so there's quite a bit of spring back. So there, I got my 90. Now what I want to do is I want to put another 90 right here. So I put it in my brake here. Clamp it down. And uh-oh, I'm gonna have a problem. When I bring this up, this other angle, this other bend is gonna hit right there. So there's no way that I'm gonna be able to get a 90 in there. That is the advantage of a finger brake. Because these, every single one of these fingers um, is movable and there's different size fingers. So you can put together a couple or use them individually and customize uh, different widths of, of your brake. So now, I'm going to come right here, um, lock that side down, come over here, line up my sight line, lock it down, and it's good, it's holding it good in there. So I got it locked down, so now, bring it up now I remember there was quite a bit of spring back I'm actually hitting I'm actually hitting the uh, the base of the brake right there so what I'm gonna have to do is it's pretty close to 90 but I can I can kind of manipulate this a little bit with my finger and now you can see where it actually damaged it a little bit right there I could uh, I could flatten that out uh, but now I've made a corner so this could be a part uh, that gets riveted into a 90 degree corner and the rivets could go right there and hold. This could be like a, uh, a bracket or a tray for, you know, a, a, an autopilot or something like that or an ELT, uh, something like that. So like I said, this brake, the way it's set up, will do a 330 second radius. A lot of times, um, you need to do a bigger radius than 330 seconds. Probably the most common radius that we use in most of our sheet metal is an eighth of an inch. So that's where we use these little shims. Um, so this shim right here is uh, good for an eighth of an inch. And there's a couple different ones. So if you needed to, this one right here, these two in conjunction with each other, uh, will do 532nd of an inch radius. And if you add this one in there, it'll put a 3 16th radius on your work. So these shims can be used uh, in, in conjunction with each other. Now as you can imagine, if I had to put in all three of these shims plus my piece of work and clamp down, I mean this thing clamped down a piece of 20,000th aluminum. If I tried to throw in three shims and a piece of aluminum, it would be, it would be really big. So that is where we uh, adjust, I'm going to grab some wrenches here. We have two different settings. We have two different settings on the brake. Um, here, we're going to need to adjust the clamping pressure, the clamping pressure of the fingers, and that's done by adjusting the nuts here. Adjust the clamping pressure on the fingers. Uh, this adjustment right here actually adjusts the setback of the fingers. So we'll show you how to do that here in just a second. So. I remember right, this is a 15 sixteenths, a 15 sixteenths, so just going to have to loosen that a little bit um, and then tighten this one. 
a lot of these you can kind of do them with your fingers. There, I adjusted the clamping pressure a little bit. Let's see if I let's see if I did it right. The way we know is we put our shim in there, we put our piece in there, and it should clamp down without excessive force, but it also should not let your piece slide. So this is in there nice and tight. This I added a shim, and I added a little bit thicker piece of aluminum. This is a 25 thousandths. The other thing you want to do is uh, check your setback. So what you want to be able to do is lift your brake up and um, put your shim in there and there should be there should be just enough space for your work to lay in between uh, the, the part that actually does the bending and the shim. Now I got a little bit of play in there, so I'm going to try to remove some of that play. Um, so I'll loosen this a little bit, and then uh, maybe you can come right above and you can actually see the setback move. So I had a little bit too much play, so I'm going to move, I'm going to adjust my setback and I'm going to actually move the fingers towards my hand right here. Um, so I'll loosen these two. And I'm going the wrong way. There's a little bit of trial and error. So I'm adjusting it a little bit closer. So now let's see, now I clamped it down. And I'll take my piece here. And I got just enough room. So now my piece has enough room where it's not binding but there's, there's no play in there. So I kind of got lucky. Now keep in mind with the way this brake works and a lot of brakes like this, there's adjustments to the setback and to the clamping pressure on this end. You just have to keep in mind whatever you do to this end, you have to do to the other end too because both ends have uh, the adjustments for the setback and for the, and for the clamping. Um, so I got my shim in there. Now I'm gonna put I'm gonna put my piece in here. I got my sight line drawn on there, so I'm with my left hand. I'm kind of holding the shim, and as I'm clamping it down, it's right on my sight line there. Everything's tight, and there. And I did a did a nice uh, 90 or close to it. And that's with an eighth of an inch radius. So by putting one shim in there, I changed my radius from 3 30 seconds to an eighth. Like I said, we would use all three shims if we wanted to bend something uh, to a 3 16th radius. Keep in mind, if we did use all three shims, we would have to adjust the clamping pressure and the setback. I hope, uh, I hope this video clarified a little bit on how to use uh, the brake, a couple different styles of brakes, and how to use the fingers. Um, remember to uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and uh, check out my other videos. Have a good day.